I have a total of seven Intermountain GP10 Paducah locomotives and if you watch any videos on YouTube of the old prototypes of the GP10s uh, you notice that they are usually in consists of anywhere from four to six sometimes eight of these locomotives these were not the most reliable locomotives so they usually had several um, in a in a consist to ensure that the train got to where it was going here's a top view I have two of the ICG Intermountain GP10s these particular units actually have the MU hoses and receptacles and a little walk platform the outer radius of my layout is 18 degrees so if I try to join these together you can see that right here the platforms hit before the couplers can actually couple so how these are manufactured I can't run them in a lash up because the rails or the the, the um, walk ramps actually hit when they're going around the corner so I've developed a solution to allow me to run these uh, in a consist I'm sure you can get, and I, actually I, I'm not even sure, I know you can get extended couplers that you could install in the locomotives that would give you the clearance that you need but I don't want to try to fit, fiddle around, take the shells off the locomotives, etc. I have a bunch of old, and when I mean old, I have, these are probably 20 year old uh, rail cars or Walther's Blue Box that I had original metal KD couplers on. So I took a couple KD couplers, took the, um, the, the, the quote unquote the hose off. I just took my Dremel tool, you can see right there where I, where I drilled those off basically I soldered these two couplers together cut the ends off soldered them together and then on the top side the piece that I cut off I actually soldered that on the top because what would happen is if I tried to put this on a coupler without this top piece it would just slide right off it's not like a locomotive or rolling stock where it's actually held in place on the frame of the locomotive or the or the rolling stock so I have two knuckles that are um, soldered together and then I have pieces on top that prevent the, the uh, coupler from sliding off. So there you see my coupler. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to slide this piece right over the top. And you can just see that it's held in place there. I'll bring the other locomotive in. Slide this over the top of the other coupler and voila I now have the clearance that I need I've got the couplers that will actually move and I can run these in a lash up here's what it looks like from a side view I know it doesn't look overly prototypical it does um, give you some extra space in between the locomotives but with my layout being a small layout, I don't have, you know, 30 or 34 degree radius turns where, you know, I, I, I could afford to not have to do this. This just allows me, it, it was an ineffect, effective, inexpensive manner for me to be able to, to connect these locomotives and run them without having any kind of um, collisions between the two locomotives. Okay, so I have three of my units set up here. I actually manufactured two of those uh, coupler extenders. So I have three locomotives set up and I want to connect them and basically uh, do a multiple unit setting on my throttle. So the key to be able to do this on the Digitrack system is whichever the lead locomotive is, that address has to be programmed on the right side throttle so you can see the flashing smokestack means that this is the the right side and it's active 8059 is my lead unit so I actually have that set up as an address over here on the right side so I need to add the other two locomotives the next locomotive in the consist is 8120 so now I'm going to hit my left throttle and I want to program 8120 into the left side so eight one two zero enter now here's the key 
8059 is heading this direction, 8120 is heading the opposite direction. So in order for this to work, we need to make sure that the direction indicators on the throttle are appropriate for the locomotive. So here, 8059 is going forwards, 8120 needs to be going backwards, so I'm going to change that. So now I'm going to hit the MU button or the multi-unit button and it's going to ask me plus is add that to the consist minus is remove. So I'm going to hit the Y yes to add it to the consist. So now 8120 is consistent to 8059. The unit after that is 8173. So I'm going to go ahead activate my left side throttle hit loco and I'm going to hit 8173 enter and again this is running opposite direction of the lead unit 8059 so I'm going to change the direction on my throttle hit the multiple unit button and it's going to ask me to plus add minus remove I want to add this so I'll hit the plus key so now that is in the consist with these three locomotives so I'm going to go ahead and apply track power So 8059 is the lead unit, so I'm going to turn the headlight on, turn the number boards on, we'll do a startup sequence. And now I can just run the right side of my throttle with 81, or I'm sorry, 8059 as the lead unit, and the other two units will follow in tow. Okay, and the very last thing you need to do to remove these from the consist, 
Here's your throttle. We'll come over here. Again, hit MU. So 8173 plus to add, minus to remove. We want to remove this. I'm going to hit the minus. So that has now been released from the consist. I'm going to hit, whoops, hit exit here. So I need to change my third locomotive, which is 8120. Hit MU again, add to plus to add, minus to remove. We'll hit minus to remove it. So now all of these locomotives have been successfully removed from the consist, and you can work them independently with the throttle with the correct address. If you have any questions about doing consisting with the Digitrax DT402, please comment, and I'll do my best to answer your questions. Thank you.